Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and today I want to do the top 10 mucus forming foods that people think are healthy. The top 10 pus and mucus forming foods that people think are healthy. So, uh, we have a couple honorable mentions. First, we have all American, good old, wholesome. Jello. Jell. Oh no! <laughs> that was corny. We'll get the corn in a little bit. Uh, let's see. What, what's what's actually in Jello? So, Jello comes from the collagen extracted from bones, connective tissue, organs, and some intestines of animals like cows and horses. So let me ask you this question: If we're going to have this sludge, jelloey filth, and we're going to make this a staple in our places of healing that we call hospitals. How is history going to look upon our era of medieval thinking when we have places that are supposed to be for healing of sick, ailing people and we're going to feed them 100% pure, like witch's cauldron. That's like what a that's what a witch make, puts in her cauldron, bones, and boil up bones and congeal, you know, pig tendons and skin. You know, that's that's not human food. Uh, the second honorable mention is soy products. Now, some people might have wanted me to include that in the top ten, but. There's, I don't know, you know, the, the, the reason I don't necessarily put it in there is it's, some, it's not a health food. There's nothing healthy about it. The soy milks, all this stuff create mucus and ultimately constipation in the body. But I don't know, I mean, you can use it on a transition I don't know, maybe I should have put it. Maybe it should have been, uh, you know, okay, honorable mention slash number 11, (laughs) soy products. Uh, When you're talking about the mucusless diet or you're talking about anything in the realm, for me, of the advanced plant-based healing diets, you're not talking about soy. You know, that all that stuff creates mucus. You know, so you're not talking about, you know, a lot of vegans end up getting into like these processed kind of, uh, as a friend of mine calls, Franken foods, <laughs> where, you know, all these soy burgers and, you know, soy this and that, you know, and, uh, and I, you know, I talk about in the very beginning of my transition, I got into some of that stuff. But the difference is when you're thinking in terms of transition, no matter where you are, because you don't, never have to feel guilty about where you are, you know, as a lot of people do, is it, and there's a lot of people that talk about health that are, well, if you don't get your diet, as a, as a friend of mine said, it, the pristine diet, be pristine, be perfect, and that's what it takes, it's like, no, it takes a transition, it takes transforming your body and your physiology to the point where you cannot even ingest things that hurt the body, you know, that's what a health that's what a healthy person is. That's what a clean a healthy person isn't somebody that can just eat with impunity, eat everything they want, and then they don't gain weight. Because health doesn't really have that much to do with weight as we think it does in our society. Health is about, you know, a healthy body isn't gonna be able to tolerate dead animal eating. You know, a healthy body isn't gonna be able to drink milk. And be able to either not throw it up or get incredibly sick. Because the human body is not designed for these foods at all. But we'll get to that. Let me, let me not get too sidetracked here. 